title. Okay, here we go. Um, um, modifying, probably, I probably spelled that wrong. M-O-D? Yeah. I F Y. Okay. And then I N G. Something like that. Modifying. Uh. Are we supposed to do this upside down? Large. Uh. Models. Modifying large models. For your games. Hey, everybody! <clears throat> Kicking on chat right now, so. Mystics, if you're there, call us afterwards. Oh, yeah, Mystics, uh, if you could give us a call at the end of the show, um, just so I can uh, convert this over to uh, the forever category. Come on, welcome to chat room. Where's my chat? Ah, here we go. Zegron. Hey, Mystics. Cool. TJ Scarrett. How's it going, buddy? Very cool. Is there two different songs going at the same time? Sounds like it. Or it's the super techno remix of this song. That's crazy. Okay, guys. Um, all right, we got kind of an interesting show. A little bit different than I normally do. Um, I put a video up yesterday because um, I got just a crazy good find. Um, I, uh, I've been looking for sculpture just because I felt like working on sculpture for some odd reason. And I couldn't find any the last couple of times that I had gone to uh, some of my favorite uh, thrift store haunts. And then I found a bust of uh, that's a foot tall of, like, I think it's Beethoven with the big collars and stuff. And so I'm like, this would totally work for, like, uh, like uh, a 40K, like, Commissar leader or whatever. Honey, you're standing on my power cord. Really? My power cord? <laughs> it's on my computer, which makes it my power cord. My computer? I'm using it right now, which makes it mine. <laughs> mine. Okay, so, sorry guys. So, here is what I'm uh, talking about. Obviously, the guy on the your right, which is probably the left because everything's backwards. But yeah, I took. I'll 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 have him to the side, and I'll talk you through what I did. Um, so what what am I talking about as far as modifications here? I started off by uh, doing like a uh, oh, what is it like the uh, the semi uh, pipes coming out of the temple, and then his eye. I used uh, a Gatling gun. Then I did like a, uh, a, a rebreather, and then it's got like mandible, if you look real close, it's got uh, like speakers on it. So he's got like uh, mandible uh, twin speakers, so he can talk in like those split voices. And then um, the breathing tube was so difficult. I had to... Uh, I had to grind down a wooden dowel to fit it inside the plastic. Then I had to drill it out and then pin it with a big piece of um, copper. Uh, then I uh, then I had to make a whole sculpture to hold it in place while this thing glued. It's it's semi flexible, but it's pretty structurally sound now. It's had about 24 hours to cure. And then uh, let's see if I can figure this out. I always go the other way. Then I've got the servitor. Let's see. Sorry, guys. I'm trying to... Ah, there we go. Ah, there we go. And I've got a servitor gun. And if you look at the barrels, they, uh, 
they kind of focus together at a point out in front, and that point out in front is exactly the distance that, like, a main, you know, a guy in charge would be talking to him. So it's like it's specifically set up to kill underlings. Um, so that's uh, that's how uh, that's that was my my neat find of the uh, of the day. Is that guy right there? Oh, and he's got he's got like an ex external pacemaker over his heart. Um, oh, oh, also, it's hard to see. He's also got a bionic ear. I put a an earpiece over his ear as well. So he's uh, yeah he's pretty heavily modded out. Um, I would have liked to have uh, I would have liked to have. Uh, uh, shortened this and made this less prominent, but it just didn't work out that way. And I've still got some, some stuff stuffing to do. There's a gap in here where it uh, glued, um, or didn't glue very well, I should say. So I'm going to uh, I'm going to do some green stuffing there to make that, that gap go away. Um, but the servitor was nice because his, his shoulder was quite flat. Oh, shit. Uh, sorry. Um, if you see how flat that is, it's actually the bottom of the skull is flat, and then the two guns kind of moved up along the uh, the chin jaw. They're kind of like the uh, those Eldar scorpions, and then everything sat flat, and everything just glued down real nice onto that. So I'm real happy about that. So this is uh, this is going to be uh, a centerpiece. Uh, possibly to a table, I don't know, but um, that's something that I've got to work on. Um, cyborg Beethoven, there you, there's Cyborg, Ho, Cyborg Hoven. <laughs> Silence, I kill you. Okay, so um, since uh, since this guy is, you know, where I'm going, uh, he's kind of the theme of the show today. Uh, I looked up some other stuff that uh, uh, I've had plans to do some stuff with, and uh, I picked up this guy. Uh, now, he's a normal eagle, but doesn't mean that we can't 40K this eagle out. Um, one of the things you'll notice is the eye is, uh, it's a normal eye. But it would be very easy to uh, to get some sort of a little uh, like 40k uh, specialty piece, like a gun barrel or whatever, and um, and uh, steampunk out his eye. You know what I mean? Um, you could even make it kind of oh crap! Pardon me. What do I always do? Things fall apart. Because I have no room. No room at the end? Yep. No matter how much workspace you guys have, it's never big enough. Trust me on this. Like, uh, I've got a, a bolter. Like a heavy bolter. It's really cool because it's got, like, the hole in it. It would be very easy to give him a bolter eye. Oh, I think I know what that is. Oh, That's my um, yeah. favorites. Go and turn that other, other thing on. But do you see the gun where the eye is? That would be a very easy way to 40K this out. Um, some other things that you could do if you wanted to industrial out this, uh, this bird is, uh, you know, start rotting through your, bit, your bits box. One of the, uh, one of the cool things that you could do 
is um, you could have it along the lines where there might have been several different types of, of eagles, and they might have actually had uh, giant eagles on a planet, and they started doing the same things with the eagles that they do to themselves, which is modding them out. So what you could easily do is you could easily start modding this guy out uh, in the same manner. Uh, one of the things, I don't have a smaller version of it, but like pipes, if you could find a way to do piping along the back, um, that's a possibility. Um, there's all sorts of things. I've got, I've got a big old, I'll show you what I've got. I've got a, a huge sci-fi bits box that I can root through for parts and, and all that. Um, and that's what you do. You, you just, you, you find something good at your local store. Um, hey, Greenleaf, how you doing, buddy? That's the man right there, Mr. Greenleaf. He makes some crazy cool stuff. Yup, yup, yup. So, um, you know, so you just start going through your bits box. I really have to apologize. Um, some things, sometimes things flow real easy for the show. Today is not one of those days. <laughs> So I might do some jumping back and forth. Um, mostly what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to show you guys um, how, to, how to get a good find and then different things you can do to make it table specific. Um, one of the things that uh, my wife has got is a Kador army. And so I'm going to show you some of the, some of the stuff that I'm, I'm planning on doing to help out her build. Now, um, so I, I had, yeah, so she can inevitably beat me like she inevitably beats me all the time. Um, so you guys have seen the big bear, and this is like a crazy, crazy big bear. Give you an idea of how big this guy is from the tip of his nose to his butt is like 10 inches. And he's, I don't know, almost five inches tall. So he's he's stupid big, uh, which is exactly what I want for the fluff for her army because I want to have two of these guys pulling a, a sled fortress that's going to be roughly two feet long um, behind it, and then like it's going to have like a uh, uh, a deck in front of it, you know, like uh, like in the old 1950s. Uh, you know, propaganda films, you know, uh, you know, addressing the masses, you know, the Soviet masses. I want to have the same kind of thing for Kador over the top of that. Uh, yeah, it's, it's a huge bear. As a matter of fact, that's not the only thing uh, in the Kador force that's flipping huge. Um, this is something else. I was originally used this for wood elves. This is another just crazy huge um uh, uh, model. I'll give you an idea how big this guy is. Uh, from his tail to the fr to out to the end of his uh, horn is like again nine inches tall, and this guy's even bigger. From his foot to the top of his head is about eight inches. To his shoulder is like a good six inches. Um, so this is like a perfect like a a, ho a hoda type. Uh, monster, for lack of a better way to put it. It's beautifully painted. I mean, look at the paint job that they did on this thing. It's like, I would not want to take a paintbrush to this at all. The, whoever painted this uh, did a fantastic job. I mean, just look at the at, at the paint job. It's, it's just, I mean, they, they've got fade work into the horns. It's, it's just stupidly beautiful. So it's like the paint job is already freaking done for you. But anyways, um, the whole idea is that, that I want to make this part of a, a, a giant Kadorian force because they've got like a, a role-playing game system for it. Uh, 
and you know, role playing games give you a lot more breadth than tabletop games. You know, it's it's one thing for you to come in and say, "Oh, I invented this whole army for you to fight." Nobody's going to want to fight you because how do they know that it's balanced? In a role playing game, the DM can throw whatever they want to at you. There's no sense of uh, fair or balanced. Um, everybody just trusts that the DM has gone through his head and has tried to make it an interesting battle, and usually one that they'll that the characters will win by the skin of their teeth. And that's what I want to do uh, with War Machine. I want to do stuff where you're going into cricks and you've got to fight cricks, and it's going to be a really tough battle the whole way through. Same thing with Kador. And if we go on, um, Ben's Ben's here. Ben from Tabletop Gaming Center. My wife is putting him to work. Well, the slave driver that she is. Oh, oh, she's. Do you want to show us yeah, your, yeah. your guy? Yeah, yeah. This is the, this is what I did he the did. Base and some of the little stuff. The check did the check rest. this out, yeah. guys. He painted. Of course, I managed to get the arm. Let's see. The wife did the rest. Yeah, the it, this is a combined effort between my wife and him. The fact that painting. The wife did it is amazing. <clears throat> yes. Well, the wife is amazing to begin with. But it's like uh, it's like you you pick. One nice thing and then he'll find that's you. okay. That's okay. I have lots of things I can criticize. Yeah, that's true. I I, I keep a long list just in case. Mm -hmm. So very cool. Um. <clears throat> so anyways, uh, back to the bear. So one of the things I want to show you guys is signs, and I've got to find. What happened to my sign? Oh here. Here's a sign that I picked up. A couple bucks. I don't know. Three bucks, baby. But it's got it's it's thick. It may look thin, but that's that's fairly thick card, and the, it's just the right width because you can cut it with a scissors and physically bend it. So to give you an idea of, of uh, you know getting back to our original concept of modifying uh, existing models to accentuate your games, I started cutting out. Um, these pieces, if you can see. Now, how many people see here have seen Golden Compass and the Armored Bears? They're very freaking cool looking. If you get a chance, uh, go check out. There's even a video game that was based on it, um, <clears throat> where again they have this humongous polar bear in full armor. Really, really cool. So what I did is uh, I started off doing, uh, I, I cut them, I bend them. Let's see if I can get this going. I'm going to do this a little bit off camera. Forgive me, guys. Um, and I'll give you an idea of, of how at least I went about doing it. Hey, how many people uh, have seen uh, Joey Berry uh, at the uh, grumpy, grumpy old uh, gamers convention? In uh, England, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you, <clears throat> yeah, Beasts of War was there. Love those guys. Super nice guys. Check out Beasts of War if you've, uh, if uh, you you get a chance. But okay, here is the bear, in its uh, present armored glory. Of course, I'm gonna. Of course, everything falls apart. Ah! Yeah, isn't this fun? I love having no room whatsoever to work in. Oh my god! Yeah, as easy as one, two, catastrophic collapse. So okay, here we go. It's, it's best to start from the back when you're doing armor with overlapping plates. So there is the plates for the the bear, and then I'll do this because it doesn't have the crazy looking piece on it. And then you just start putting pieces over it. And then I don't want to do it yet until I totally have everything cut out and dry fit everything. But at that point, um, I'm probably going to paint the armor separately. And I'm probably going to glue it on separately. Um, you know, I might, I might even use some, uh, some green stuff if I can't get, like, a good glue surface going. But this is, like, an easy way... To, to do this. And this will work for the other other guy as well. I have, I've designed this for the bear, 
but I'm willing to bet if I go on him, I'm going to get fairly similar results. Now, because he's narrower at the shoulder and wider at the back, as opposed to the bear, which is wider at the back and then narrower, or at the wider at the shoulder and then narrower towards the back, I'm going to switch these around. I'm going to go the narrow one first, and then progressively go to a wider. Uh, there we go. So you see how that how it it works the same but in reverse. So that's let's see. So that's, and then it's a bit long in the shoulder. I would make it a longer piece so it would cover more of the body. But you can see where this, this can work for you. So like I said, and that, that, uh, that sign I want to say is probably at least a foot by a foot and a half. So... You've got 144 square inches. Pardon me, my nose is itching. You got about 144 square inches per foot. So you're talking over 200 square inches of plating for, like I said, maybe three bucks. So you can plate up probably both your bears, and I've got two of these as well. So, and I might even get two more bears because it'll look better with like four. Uh, uh, four guys uh, pulling this this huge sleigh. Um, <clears throat> so, other things that uh, I found. Um, oh, I'll show that first. Uh, be right back. This kind of ties into yes last week's show, but these were so cool, I had to pick them up. They're, uh, I think they're buttons, but they've got this beautiful geometric shape to them, and it's like they've been pre-dry brushed. If you look at them, that's not a highlight. They're actually, like, dry brush painted. And I've got, I, I bet you I've, I've got a hundred of these things. Now, one of the things that is so cool about these is if you look at them from the side and you look at, like, rubber boots for um, hydraulics, you can totally start stacking these and making little hydraulic, you know, compression boots for vehicles, for landing pads, for anything that you want a shock absorber to, to give and move. And like I said, I've got, I probably got well over a hundred of these things. So this is a goodwill find. This, <laughs> this video may, may, uh, may, uh, come to the point where I'm just showing you all the really cool finds I've been having of late, depending on how, uh, how nice, uh, things are playing. But, um, yeah, they would be cool for that huge door. You're right. Um, this is why we don't let the husband out of the house. Yeah. Letting me into a thrift store is a very bad idea. Now, everybody knows that the hottest army right now is Eldar because they're the latest, uh, <clears throat> latest army that's out. So, I, I went there and I found this. And if you look at the iconography... They've got lots of circles. They've got the plating. <clears throat> it's very curvy, very Eldar-esque. I mean, granted, it's got, like, the stupid bounce button and, and all this other stuff. But if you look at it, I mean, this just screams Eldar. And someone also pointed out this also screams Tau. I mean, depending on how you play it, the only difference I would say between Tau and and Eldar is, is that Tau goes into perfectly straight lines in some of their design concepts, whereas uh, Eldar almost never uses a perfectly straight line in anything. It's always curved. Uh, yeah, it's yeah, it's like letting women into a shoe store. You got that right. So, anyways, um, now you're going to notice it's got the uh, the uh, 
what is it, the uh, screw holes. So I've already taken that into account, and I have crystals, like Eldar crystals, for this already. So if you look at it, I'll just let, uh, let gravity hold it in place. I've got Eldar crystals already there. So I can literally just, uh, here, let's uh, flip this down a little bit. I can literally just drop crystals in here. Matter of fact, I'll even do it. I'll for once actually, now watch, I'll sneeze and they'll all go on the floor because that's my life. But see, I can make all those disappear, and I've got, and I can start doing uh, uh, lighting effects if I want to, um, and make those look like they're glowing. If I'd had a little more time before the show, I probably would have shown you how to, uh, well, actually, I, I have kind of prepped a little bit for this. Um, give you an idea. Uh, I, I've got a deck cut out for. This is a huge deck. It's probably bigger than I need it to be, and I haven't done any uh, edge work on it, meaning uh, cutting in circles, you know, making it a little more shapely. The main thing is you want to be big enough that your your biggest Eldar tank can land on it. And if you're a Forge World buyer, they've got some crazy big Eldar tanks out there. So, and this this deck here that I'm showing you, uh, this deck is thirteen and a half inches across, almost fourteen inches across. So it's it's pretty big, and like I said, uh, depending on the size of the the the, the grab tank or, or vehicle you're dealing with, there's a lot of room for me to go in and do some fancy scroll work along the edges uh, before doing any crenellation work. And with this kind of thing, you can do double duty with your crenellations. Um, you can actually make it into like uh, legs, which is what I would probably do. Um, and the beauty of it is if you cut your notches that thin, um, it's very disassemblable. It's very easy to transport to a buddy's house and play on it. Um, so this is some ideas here to go with. Um, get that out of the way. Ah, um... Cut it with the bandsaw, you can. Yeah. I wish I had a 13-inch vertical uh, displacement. That would be flipping awesome. Uh, as long as we're going over some of this stuff, and I'm showing you things like this, um, just to keep in theme and to give our fantasy players something to uh, sink their teeth into, I'm going to show you some other stuff that are really good centerpiece monumental pieces for tables. Uh, this is going to be specifically for your uh, Vampire Counts players. I'll be back in 30 seconds. This is a bad boy. I've been waiting a long time to uh, to use. I still haven't had had time to do it, but this is something that I'm planning on. Let's see if I can get the lighting set up here so you guys can really see the detail. Okay, the lighting is from behind, so I've got to go this way. Sorry, guys. See the uh, the detail work along that. This is just stupidly cool. And yes, it lights from the inside. It lights from the inside. Um, I'm not, and if you look really close, it's shaped like a flame. 
So it lights from the end. It's shaped like a flame. Uh, you can look through it. It's got these beautiful columns holding up the center of it. It's got a perfectly flat top that you can put anything on top of it that you want. You want to use this as a dungeon and uh, make like a, a small like boss layer to this height. I could easily cut uh, cut columns to to this height, and then have a little mini dungeon at the at the top for your boss fight. Um, like I said, it's got the the uh, repeated motif here and here. You can even see it looks like twisted barbed wire. It's really neat, and um, it's also got some really slick stuff going with it as well. I mean, look at the detail on this guy. It's got glowing eyes. It's just gorgeous. Yeah, I I, uh, I really got a steal of a deal. It's even got, um, if you look where the uh, bars cross, it looks like they're riveted together. I mean, it's just stupidly cool. And the one last thing I want to point out that's really neat Pardon me, it died. Um, it's got these flat areas here. These flat areas uh, lend themselves really well to uh, games. Let's say, for instance, you're trying to save uh, uh, a, uh, a member of your party, and you're in a dungeon. You can very easily... Um, all right, these are the wrong side. Oh, here we go. Here we go. You can very easily do like crow cages and put the the enemy or your character. You see the the, the uh, this concept here. I've got like my my crow cage kind of thing. I could drop it right in there. And then you've got, you know, save your, save your, uh, your, you know, the members of your team, or you know, like the uh, the mayor's daughter or whatever. So you can have up to four characters. Technically, technically speaking, eight because I could have four on the ground here. I could have hanging crow cages up here as well. It would be very easy for me to mount underneath this. Uh, it'd be very easy for me to mount underneath this a uh, an earth magnet. And if you take a look, got just a couple of earth magnets. By the way, Mini Wargaming still sells these. You're gonna want to get these. Very freaking useful. Um, you're only uh, <clears throat> the only thing holding you back is your imagination. So that is a really a neat piece that um, that you can do a lot of stuff with. Um, let's go back into 40k. I'll be back in like 30 seconds. I'll show you some really cool stuff you can do with your space wolves. Actually, two options. Okay, this is this is a great find. This is one of these finds that um, I wonder is that the lower light or is that the upper light? I'm gonna kill this light here. I think that's the one that's blinding everybody. Okay, this is a wolf that I picked up uh, at a thrift store. Um, it is a uh, it, it's it's relatively not robust. If you listen really closely, yeah, it's it's fairly thin. Um, there's a type of mold called a slush mold. It's usually used with like resin. And what they do is they they uh, they have the mold, they pour in the mold making material, and then they kind of spin the mold around. They'll sit and they'll do this. They'll hold it in all different directions, 
And what they're doing is they're waiting for the stuff to cure. And by spinning it in all these different directions while the mold is curing, it's getting into all the different nooks and crannies of the piece. Um, like I said, it's not a very robust piece. This is not something you want to knock over or knock on the floor. Um, it does have a little bit of a chip off of the ear, but it was like, if I'm doing Space Wolves, a little bit of battle damage is not a bad thing. It's actually a good thing. So this is my, my uh, not awesome, but totally freaking acceptable, uh, like, Space Wolves giant wolf statue. And by the way, I have the coolest Captain American space uh, marine here, painted by a certain guy in a green shirt behind me, um, to give you some scale ideas here. Um, if you're looking at the size of, of the wolf, there's your space marine, there's the wolf. To give you an idea of scale, this wolf stands 11 inches tall, and it's about eight inches wide. And this is this is not my best wolf. And we'll we'll keep Mr. Captain America Space Marine handy. You're gonna see my my prize wolf. This is the bomb. Yes, he's really that big. Let's see if I can get him all all in yeah. So this guy is a wolf. He's howling. If you look, you can even like see in his mouth. I mean, if you were like really wanted to get like crazy cool, you could literally have uh uh use steel wool, make flames and make it look like uh flames are coming out of the wolf's mouth like they actually use the wolf is part of the exhaust system for the heating system for the uh, fortress. I and mean, you can do some just crazy cool stuff um, with this model. Um, this one is, uh, most models that you're going to work with tend to be vertical. They tend to have a small base in comparison to their height. This guy, on the other hand, is really cool because he's not that way from tail to head he's almost 14 inches and like I said he's about 11 inches tall and he's about I'd say three inches wide this is a really good piece if you want to uh, have something on the top of like your command center now I've black based them I'm not done black based them I want to redo them all up in stone but it's like it's just a gorgeous model all the way around. This is a, a great uh, a great find. These are the kinds of things you want to go and look for, guys. Um, especially if you're someone like Greenleaf who can make terrain for any particular army. If he's going through a goodwill and he's out of town and he can pick up something like this um, for you know not too much money. You can turn around, you can make a heck of a big profit making like a Space Wolves gaming table and having this be your centerpiece. This is the reason I go and I do these kinds of things. Because how many human armies do we have for 40K? It's like half of all the armies. You've got Sisters of Battle, Space Marines, Imperial Guard, um, you know, Space Marines. You've got all these different armies. Yeah. Uh, this could, well, it's not really, this wouldn't function well for chaos. Oh, what I'm saying as far as, like, is yeah. human armies, this is, like, the, the perfect kind of thing to get because it's non-army specific. Um, I can cover, like I said, a half a dozen armies with this one sculpt, and it'll work for any of them. Um, not to mention that, um, you've got, uh, steampunk-style games becoming more and more and more and more popular, this could totally work for steampunk. The only thing that really makes this 40k so much is the servitor on the arm with the the, uh, the guns, and that can easily be overlooked as just a detail for steampunk, you know. So, uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. so that's the kinds of things 
um, that I look for, for like uh, like monuments. Um, ba, 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 ba. Do we any questions, guys? I kind of feel like I've been just uh, talking a, a a ton here and and maybe not addressing questions that that you guys have. Is there any any questions you guys got? Um, like where do you go? What do you look for? You know, what are my personal preferences? Or you know, any uh, any questions? We'll tell you what. Um. I guess I'll just be proactive. Um, places that you want to go to look for this sort of stuff. Um, garage sales are awesome because every Saturday and Sunday you're guaranteed uh, to have a, a, just a bunch of them around. Just lock your husband in the house. Yeah. If you're me, uh, she chains me up on those days. If you uh -huh. can use this, it's way late in the show to be handing you this. Ah, that's okay. Still that's fine. Um, ah, I'm good. I'm good. Um, but anyways, yeah, garage sales are probably going to be, like, your closest to home thing because, like, you literally don't have to leave your neighborhood a lot of the times. I know on in our neighborhood, we usually get, like, one to two a week within, like, a two-block radius. Um, and it goes up exponentially as you go out in our subdivision. Uh, the next thing, uh, obviously, is going to, like, a, a Goodwill, a Salvation Army, um, and just uh, there's – any number of just places uh, that are like secondhand store style things, um, you're typically not going to find something this cool at like uh, a dollar store. However, there are things you can find at a dollar store that unbelievably accentuate um, something like this. And let me give you a, a beautiful example of something that can, this is already an incredible piece. I can turn this into a home run piece with something from a dollar store. I'll show you that real quick. Be right back. Uh, I've been called to entertain you while Bill's going to find whatever enormous sculpture he's looking at now. So I'll show you what I've been doing for the duration of this show. This is uh, another rogue trader ship. My uh, gaming group has been doing a campaign. This is from Drop Zone Commander. Uh, I love the sculpts for these. So um, we ended up picking another raider. And yeah, dance monkey dance. I'm getting the dance monkey dance thing. Yeah, Rogue Trader. What? That's what I brought today. I was like, this. Yeah, right. That's the thing. See, I come here and I never have any plan of what I'm going to do. I just come here and, like, grab toys and just start making stuff. Well, you are willing to walk this train. I'm like, toys are us for hobbyists. Yeah, no kidding. Like, it's just you say that you need something. It's like, oh, yeah, I've got six of those right here. No problem. Okay. Some right. other, other right. cool right. stuff. Okay. It's kind of funny. I, 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 it, it turned from how to modify monuments to look at all my freaking monuments. Um, all right. Imagine this painted up. Uh, silver and brass. Okay, all this is is just a a, a a dollar serving tray. It's plastic, which we learned how to do in the last last week's show. Yeah, but check it out. You take this. You even look at at the silhouette of that, and the silhouette of that, and they fit almost perfectly. So imagine if you will. This brass roof is like the roof to a, a complex. Isn't that cool? That would make it so, so nice. And, like, you can, like, run pillars down this, like Roman-style pillars. That, you know, you can do some crazy cool stuff with stuff from a dollar store. Like I said, this this little $1 piece... Paint it up nice can exponentially make your piece of terrain worth that much more if you want to sell it or just look that much cooler. Okay? 
So never disregard, you know, your dollar store thing. Even check this out, guys. Now, I'm never going to use this, do that because I use this. But this is what I use for uh, drying out all of these bricks, that whole box of bricks. This goes into a dehydrator. And the way that a dehydrator works is that it works kind of like a mini oven, but it also lets a lot of air in. So it dries out and speeds up the drying process, whatever you put in here. Usually it's used for like meats and stuff. You want to make like some, some beef jerky or something. But I mean, if you found a broken one uh, and it doesn't even work anymore, these make awesome landing pads. They're freaking beautiful. You know, and in case you were wondering, yes, this is what I use as my template for this. You know, always get multiple uses out of your stuff, guys. Um, now, going back to fantasy, um, I found this incredible, oh yeah, or dried fruit. I found an incredible piece from Lizardmen. Check this bad boy out. Sharp teeth and every freaking thing. This is resin, by the way. Crazy cool, huh? This is would be perfect for lizard men. You could totally see he even is sitting like a slam. You know, you could even make this guy look like a lizard guy. Now, granted, he is tiki, but it's like tiki is is a jungle style theme. And, that, and they're a jungle style theme. Or a totem frog. But I mean, check this out. Look at the detail level that this guy's got. It's all chiseled. This thing could totally be done up as stone. Now remember I was telling you about with the Eldar, you can cover up those drill holes. I've got, I could, you could totally do the D&D &D player's handbook crystal thing. And put some big freaking, see a little bit of glint there? Put your, your crystal eyes into it. This is so cool, I actually got two of these. So I could literally do like a Lizardman setup where I've got like two of these and like a big deck uh, on the top with like stairs going up to it. And you could totally do like an adventure underneath the deck that these things are holding up. Um, it's designed to have like a, a potted plant in it, believe it or not. It's got the got the the uh, uh, the the drain hole, and you're like, well, gee, you know, that's got to be expensive being resin. Eight bucks, guys. Tell me this is not worth eight bucks. Seriously. If there would have been more than two. I probably would have bought more than two. I probably bought the last two they had, to be completely honest. And I've got a stupid amount of Lizardmen that I haven't painted up yet. Trust me, I'm going to have a good time with this guy. You really... This, this, oh my God, makes a table. You paint up something like this and just do a couple things around it, people will come from across the freaking room to take a look at your table. Trust me. Trust me on that. Um... So I, I guess today was Bill showing off all of his stuff today. <laughs> kind of sorry about that. Oh, yeah, what's the size on this thing? Good point. It's, it's stupid big. I mean, the diameter, it's, it's like 8 inches in diameter. It's, it's freaking gigantic. And the height is like almost 9 inches. So it's 8 inches in diameter, almost 9 inches. Um, and also, if you go to dollar stores right now, for whatever reason, they've got lots of tiki cups. Now, what you do, cups, cups tend to be about 8 inches tall. So you could take those tiki cups and have them be your pillars. So think about it. I can get every four cups, I've got enough pillars to make a, uh, a deck around this guy. So, I mean... And this it's, is the time to go get it. And this is the time to go get it. Exactly. They're in season right now. So, you know, a lot of this stuff is two things. 
It's dogged persistence and timing. Like, uh, I've got, and Ben will attest to this, I have a stupid amount of snow trees. Oh, my God. Yeah, I probably have somewhere in the neighborhood of somewhere between 100 and 200 snow trees because I timed it right. I went after Christmas. Uh, I went to all the closeout sales. And I got them dirt cheap. I got them as cheap as I could get them. Hey, Modest Magic! Woo! -hoo! How you doing, buddy? Um, go check out Modest Magic. Uh, he made an incredible table uh, that was both a uh, a massive tower. I I can't even remember the diameter of it. It was freaking huge and tall. And he mixed it in with a uh, a castle set. Uh, Totally go and check out Modest Magic. He's uh, one of the nicest guys you're ever going to meet. Um, he's got a family to take care of. Uh, I totally believe in, you know, the community should take care of its own. Um, so if you can go, you know, check him out. Check him out. I mean, you know, he's got, he does great work. He does beautiful work. Um, he started off uh, as just a, a, a person that, that had... He had to learn how to dry brush. He had a lot of things that, that he had to learn uh, right from the start. And he's, his, his, his intellectual growth curve in modeling has done that. It's gone just straight up. Um, so go check out Nick at Modest Magic. Super nice guy. Um, Eldar is in right now. Um, Act 1. Act 1 is uh, yes. an Eldar city that he builds for me. Uh, we worked on the design together. He builds it, and like I said, you're helping him out. Helps me some. It helps him more, which is more important. He's got a family to feed. I just got a hobbit to feed. We all know how much hobbits eat, me, though? though. Maybe I need yeah, the help more than she does. Child to feed, you gotta though. feed <laughs> Oh, I'm, and I've got about I've got about oh, and I gotta feed Ben. Ben is a big boy. Right. Ben can pack in the food. Let me tell you. <laughs> Uh, also, a very talented guy. Go and check out Tabletop Gaming Center. Um, I can't get rid of this guy. I mean, I, I wake up and he just, he's at the foot of my bed ready to build. It's its scary. <laughs> it, it really is. What's that? Um, is, is I do come in and wake you up in the morning. He, do, like, he does. Well, he does right. come in and wake me up. Wait, wait, he comes in and says we're playing War Machine today. And he's going to be playing War Machine today, so get on my wife and him to get some videos up of, of their uh, gameplay. I think they're doing Meanoth versus Kador. Kador. So we it's going to be a great a battle. We don't have a camera with a pause button, so we can't. We don't have a camera with a pause button. I'll probably do something. But, but, go and, but Ben will do something, so go check out Ben. Um... Ben needs more subscribers than the train minion does. Maybe we should do a live bat rep sometime. Would you guys ever be open to something like that? Really? Are you really asking them that? Here's I mean... Six people go, yes, of course. So, but uh, there we go. Modest Magic. Russ, Russ would like Green, it. Green, please. Paint? Yes, please. Black? Green? Green. This okay. isn't, uh, this is... Kelly? Do you want uh, Hunter Green? No. Okay. Um, yeah, we're in a constant state of building here. Um, so yeah, I gotta kind of apologize about that, but yeah, maybe we'll do something like that if, uh, if you guys like that. Um, I'm a noob at, at it, but it's a lot of fun. Um, but Ben was talking about he wanted to do a Lord of the Rings game. Mm -hmm. Uh, we've got a, a ton of figures that are all painted up. He's got a beautiful castle table to play it on. Um, so, you know, that's possible. Um... So yeah, yeah, we'll kick that around and, and uh, hopefully we'll get something like that that uh, that going. Um, we're not, like I said, the most interesting people in the world to watch. We're not like the cooler where we know like all the rules and stuff like that. Uh, so you'll probably see us blundering about a little bit. But you know, if you're willing to put up with with some newbies and uh, you like watching a game being played, hey, um, that'd be fun to, to do. Learn to play either. We'll True. Be, we'll yeah, if you guys know old. stuff, you can tell us stuff too in the comment section. You know, so everybody wins. Plus, you know, if we're flipping through the book, we can tell you what the what the book says. Yeah. So, you know, everybody gets something out of it. You know, hopefully you guys get some entertainment. We learn and like everybody gets better. The whole idea is that everybody gets better. 
the underpinning concept of everything that goes on, I think, on everybody's channel, definitely that's what I try and do with mine, is that we all end up getting better. Um, there's no real big secrets here that I'm trying to withhold from anybody. You know, it's not like, uh, you know, we're hiding behind the whole trade secret thing. Because um, anybody in the buy community knows, saw. yeah, you want my big secret? Buy a bandsaw, buy a scroll saw. And I've been saying that for four years now. So if it's a secret, I'm, I'm pretty crappy at keeping secrets. Um, boom, boom, boom. You guys got any questions, any comments, any things that uh, I can address for you guys? Uh, make more clear. By the way, these come in larger diameters. These these crow's cages, you know, big big trade secret. These are curlers, okay? And they work real. They're great because each one functions in two possible ways. And you want to get black if you can get it, because you don't have to paint it. That. If you look at this, also, it's got little freaking spikes all over it. It is awesome. And the thing is, is if you cut the figure off the base and it's a fairly vertical figure, it'll drop down right in there. So even though it's a small diameter, you can still fit a 28 millimeter fig in here if the arms are close to the body. So, um, so you've got this style here, and then you've got the open style. And the, the way it, it works is that one clips into the other. You get them like this, and then all you have to do is pop them off. And these are great because the back is open. You can totally put these against a wall or something, and they're like wall cages. And you can get them in like packs of eight or ten. I mean, you get a lot of them. I think these, these specifically came in like a pack of eight. Uh, they also make super cool Tesla, uh, Tesla pieces. I'll show you. Um, see what I mean? They make great Tesla Tesla ball things. And that works across a bunch of different game systems. It works really well in um, uh, uh, steampunk games. Works and can work in 40K. I mean, it's got a lot of really cool elements to that it. That could be magic and fantasy, too. Could be magic and fantasy as well. Totally. So, um, yeah, Signar, which is Ben's, uh, Ben's army. And we're, we're, that's the other thing. <laughs> we're going over our, our weapons of mass destruction, like, you know, the, uh, the, uh, the polar bears literally the size of small houses pulling sleigh fortresses to my Crick's shark-themed uh, airships. Ben has got an idea for a Signar mass weapon. How about you tell him real quick about that? Oh, I didn't even remember. See, that's the thing. We talk about so many ideas here. Like, I just want to do this enormous... They have... If you've seen their battle engines, it's like the Storm Strider or something. Yeah. It's like a giant mechanical... Four-legged Tesla ball. Yeah. And I'm like, I want to do one of these, but like a tank version and like... Just all sorts of stuff, but like with a bunch of these, like energy orbs mm -hmm. and stuff. What uh, what was that model you were talking about? Do you remember what that was called? I want to say it was a Hero Clicks model. It you said came up for about like a hundred bucks. The um the uh, Halo Clicks. Oh, it's Halo. The Clicks. Ha yeah, the Halo version. Can they see your face? Because I can't. Yeah. Okay. Um, they have a scarab from from Halo, which are enormous. And this piece, like, is going for, like, a hundred bucks if you can find it. Because um, I believe it's discontinued. Um, <laughs> it's huge. It's huge. I mean, it's like this. And I wanted to replace the giant gun on top with this giant electrical cannon. Nice. <laughs> and just all sorts of, yeah. There's so much you can do with it, and it's literally, it's... it's just, I think it's even poseable. It, like, I the arms... It looks like the legs can move. I could be wrong. Maybe. All I know is that they have the clicks on the feet, so, like, you'd have to have all four on the ground. Oh, that's how you kill it, is by destroying the four legs. Well, what is it? Yeah, it's because it's got to link up on the grid. But even so, I mean, it's in enough of a dynamic pose where... Yeah, it looks like yeah. it's it's walking. Yeah, and it's... 
and again, you paint it to Signar colors and... And away you go. Yeah. Away you go. Cool. All right. Um, I guess we're down to um, our last two minutes. Do you guys have any uh, any questions? Anything I, uh, I I can answer and hopefully uh, make more clear? And you get an idea how big these are. I want them to average to be about 30 inches long, each one. So his Signar war machine is going to be 30 inches long, along with my wife's and along with mine. They're, they're going to be stupid big. So I want, I want to do them like apocalypse-style games and just using my own, my own game system rule setter. It would take, you know, a week yeah. to do a battle. And obviously we don't have that much time. Oh, there you go. Miles Max got to go. You uh, should see a survey on what people would like to see built and then design a table based on what is most voted for. We kind of did that last week. Actually, the... last week we did. It was the um, underwater, underwater sea adventure table. Which, that... which we, by the way, so as soon as that show was over. Yeah, as soon as that show was over, we've got the piece of paper to prove it. We actually went through and figured out all the things we wanted to do on that sea table. Yeah. Not only the terrain, but how the rules would work between the terrain and the playing pieces. And Ben, if you go to his his channel, Tabletop Gaming Center, he shows you how to take the Hearst Arts water cave patterns and turn them into coral. Yeah. They were, yeah, I'll get in that. Yeah, tell them a little bit about that real quick. Yeah. Um, we want to do... There are these... Can you... Do you want to go grab those... Uh, yeah, I'll grab the cave pieces? Yeah. The Hearst Arts sets have these, these awesome... They're for really doing like a... Uh, like a cave dungeon for D and D, and um, they work perfectly. They look very, you know, underwater stuff like that. Yeah, surprise, Patrick. We do. I'm sure. Bill, see now, watch. I'm going to show you an example of what you can do at this house, Bill. Yeah. Do you have like a giant pineapple-looking thing? Oh, like SpongeBob SquarePants house. Really? See, no, there's stuff. I've done more bizarre things, and it's like, oh, yeah, we absolutely have that. He could probably pull it up. See, that's the thing, is then it's also, like, even if he has it, it's, you have to dig for it. But uh, we're going to do this whole, like, sea diving adventure. Just use a pineapple. There you go. Real pineapple. Holy. Yeah. Yeah, a um, real one. So we want to do this whole, like, diving adventure. Here are the... Here are the pieces. Does it look like coral? That totally looks like coral. Yeah. And it's again, it's like how you paint it can completely change people's perception of what it looks like. Yes. So yes. we glued on some plant life and like different colors and stuff. We're gonna do a whole um a, a whole thing with it. And there's gonna be like an exploration based aspect version, to it. And then there's gonna be the more kill them kind of. And actually, I can do this like in two seconds because I haven't told you about this. I want to do the storyline is is that they're haunted wrecks and at night there's all these like you know disappearances and pirate lights. Pirate, pi pirate ghosts maybe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we want to run this for RockCon, and uh, for the first like half of it, we're gonna do the exploration one where you're looking for treasure and trying to like you know. During the daytime. Yeah, exactly. And then at night there's like a shipwreck that has ghost pirates that Bill's got going. Um, yep. We're going to do all sorts of really cool stuff, and it'll be more combat-oriented. Right. You know, you might find some treasure, but you're also running for your life. So, yeah. um... So there's a lot coming up. Yeah, there is, yeah, yeah. And the thing is, is, yeah, if you want us to film it when we're playtesting it, yeah. we can even do uh, the bat reps on my table in there, and then... Uh, We'll work out some of the kinks because uh, he wants to do a lot of really cool things with like scuba, with like buddy breathing and things like that. So we're gonna have to work on the rules to make it, uh, you know, function. Yes. But uh, it's got a lot of really neat stuff going on. As a matter of fact, um, uh, he's got a couple of my AT43, those Russian little guy whoppers. <laughs> he's making some big daddies out of those. Yeah. So we're gonna do like, cause, cause Bill is talking about he wants to have it where there's like big monsters, like. 
Like Cthulhu. Cthulhu. <laughs> and I'm like, what are these people, what are these divers going to do with, like, like versus a Cthulhu? And yeah. So now I'm making, like, super diving suits with, with like, air. They have flamethrower arms. And so we just changed them out as air pressure. I'm painting them to look like the air scuba tanks that are, like, air pressure harpoon guns and, like, depth charge firing things. Right. We're going to have a lot of Cthulhu-esque stuff going it's on. It's going to be good. Yeah. It's going to be real good. So. But uh, I guess that's it, guys. Um, I want to thank you for coming this week. Um, thank you, Ben, for showing up. Yep. Um, and uh, I guess you guys got to see some of my toys. Hopefully I gave you uh, an idea what to keep an eye out for and uh, a couple of quick and easy ways to mod out your stuff to make it a little more game-specific. So um, thank you so much, guys. And, um, oh, Mystics, if you could give us a call. Um, so we know what we need to do at the end of this, because I don't really have the hang of it quite yet. So, but anyways, guys, thank you so much for coming, and, uh, we'll catch you guys next week. Love you guys. See ya. Bye-bye. Down at the bottom. Here, you do it. You know what you're doing. No, I don't. If you're directing me... The little blooper reel at the end, I feel like that's what people are here for. They are. That un... That uncomfortable point. After an hour, Bill tries to figure out how to turn off the live <laughs> and he show. Can, and he still can't figure yeah. it out. It's really an hour and ten minutes. If you yeah, know. at least. So I was right to begin with.